What's up, Fabrication Nation? Got a little live stream going on over here on Twitch. And uh, gonna work on the harness on the Bibster. So that's the plans for today. This episode of the Fab Forms is brought to you by Kill Fab Clothing Company. Find all the latest Fab Forms merch at killfab.com. All right, so uh, I kind of alluded to working on the harnesses for the Bibster the other day, and I uh, had some questions on you know whether I buy these harnesses, whether I make them, um, or a combination of both. And I guess it is a combination of both. I figured. Figured I would take a couple minutes in this video, kind of show you my process for building out these harnesses and planning what I need. Show you some of the things that I use to make them nice, nicer, make them work better. So yeah, let's do that. So I guess the first thing we need to look at is when I say harness, what am I talking about? So typically what I like to do is I'll buy one of these um, fuse blocks, this one, I don't know, I think it was 30 bucks or something. It came with a uh, blinker blinker module. And for whatever reason, it's got one relay on it already. Now, these aren't really that important. I, I kind of bought it just for the, the fuse block and the fact that it came with all this wire. So if you've, uh, if you've purchased wire before, it can be kind of expensive. And so for this unit to be 30 bucks, already pre-wired, already got fuses in it, everything I need, I felt like it was uh, kind of silly not to. Unless you're building like a rail buggy or something, that harness right there is not gonna really get you everything you need. Even then, it's not gonna get you everything you need, but it's a good starting point. So typically what happens is you have usually two or three powers coming into one of these, and then it's got a bunch of wires going out to the different things that you're going to run and when i say two or three different powers you're going to have you know four of these fuses that are going to be hot no matter what as soon as you turn the ignition on whether it's uh in the accessory position in the start position or in the run position three or four of these are going to be hot all the time then you're going to have you know three or four of them that are hot during the accessory position and the run position, but not the start position. There's some things you just don't want running while you're trying to start your vehicle, uh, like a fan, stuff like that. It doesn't need to be drawing power when you're trying to start the car. And then what you'll find is there'll be, uh, you know, a couple of them that are just on during the accessory, of, you know, version. So you're not powering everything when you just want to kick on the accessories, park lights, radio, stuff like that. And those will also be on during the run, the run portion as well. But you won't be powering like the coils, the computer, all the stuff that you don't need, the dash. You won't need all that stuff when it's in the accessory position. So that's typically how these are wired when you buy them. Instructions are pretty simple. It'll kind of lay everything out for you. But what I use it for is you got powers going in, they go through the fuse, and then you got power coming out to whatever it is you want to run, a fan, a water pump. Uh, a computer, your, your ignition coil, uh, power. I think that's, oh, your, maybe your dash, your lights, stuff like that. Uh, typically what's gonna happen is if it's an ECU style setup, especially if it's a modern ECU, that ECU is gonna power a lot of things as well. It's gonna power your injectors and all that kind of stuff. And it, the ECU will also trigger the relays for like the fan, the water pump, you can have it trigger, you know, for all that kind of stuff. Um, so you don't even really need switches in there. You basically just run power in to this and then out the appropriate wire, say for the fan. This is gonna go to a fan relay. It's gonna travel through that fan relay and up to the fan. And then the ECU itself will trigger the relay to basically send this power on to where it needs to go. And then if you ever have trouble with it, it's either gonna be the fuse, because it's shorted out somewhere, 
which is going to be the relay. So the computer's triggering the relay, but for some reason the relay is not switching. Or you might have a problem with the actual ECU itself, which is pretty rare. Now you can see on this one, there's a bunch of wires. Uh, and I've kind of went through and labeled them. Um, it's like that's for the fuel pump there. This blue one's for the fan, I believe. Yeah. And you got a spare. You got a couple spares, it looks like. What's this one? The horn. So, I kind of went through and labeled them. Uh, majority is I actually won't use them for what they're listed for, but I wanted to hit, go ahead and label them just so I knew when I was going to, you know, kind of route this stuff where it needed to go. Now you can see there's harnesses that also come with the ECU itself. So this is from Amp EFI, the uh, MS3 Pro that I'm going to run in this thing. It's got two of these. What's cool about these is each wire is basically printed on it. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus enough to see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, so each wire is printed on it where it goes. So like that red one there just says 12 volt switched power in. So you basically want 12 volt switched power in on this one. So that one's MS3 Pro something W34. The good thing is, luckily they all come with instructions. So that's off, that's the instructions off the relay panel itself. And then the MS3 Pro has instructions as well on where all this stuff needs to go. The problem is it can be overwhelming when you start looking at this. So you got all these wires, you got another bundle of wires here. You've got that big bundle of wires. It's like, where do you start? How do you lay it out? You know, without getting overwhelmed, you don't want to cut stuff too short. You don't want to have things wrapped around the dash three times. You want to try to build this thing as, as clean and concise as you possibly can without making any mistakes, without having too much wire, not enough wire, and that sort of thing. And so I'm kind of going to kind of show you how I go about it. Not that it's the perfect way, but it's kind of how I approach doing this wiring and not getting overwhelmed with it. All right, so one of the things I do like to do is I like to use these little distribution blocks. Now this one's pretty big. Um, I've got some smaller ones. Let's see. So I've got these little ones so you can see the difference in size. The only problem with these little ones is that it takes the little terminal ends to plug into these bad boys, but they do save a lot of space. And occasionally what I'll do is I'll double them up too. I'll either put one a little bit higher than the other so the wires on the bottom one can go underneath the wires on the top one, or just, you know, kind of stack them in there in some form or fashion. The thing that's rad about these, these little ones, or even the big ones, is that you can kind of get them everything mounted in there. What you're gonna find is when you're putting this thing together, you're kind of wiring it the way that you want it. Uh, never fails, you're gonna to need to add things. And typically, it's not just one thing. It's like you end up having to add five things over time. So instead of like splicing into a wire, if you have these distribution blocks where you kind of have a bunch of stuff plugged into them and then have a key, you know, I'll kind of like write down on a piece of paper or something, you know, terminal one is X, terminal two is X. It's easy for me to go back and look and say, oh, okay, I need to plug this, you know, um, two-step wire into the trans brake wire as well. So when I'm on the trans brake, I know that the two steps gonna be on. You can basically just tie that in on the distribution block and you're not trying to splice into a wire, cut something or, or whatnot. And then you can kind of run that whole bundle over to those blocks. So, I mean, typically you could take, you know, a majority of these that you're gonna need, plug them in all on a distribution block, kind of label what they are, or just put them together in, in a way that makes sense, right? So you got your main powers and grounds and activations, and then maybe you have a separate one for the engine harness or, or whatever. 
what you're gonna find is a lot of this stuff probably won't be used as well i mean the uh the ms3 pro has a lot of features that are more of race drag race style features that probably won't get used on this machine so i'll start off with the basics and then i'll kind of maybe plug in the rest of the stuff that i that i want to use so that's a good start start there i like to use those we'll kind of incorporate that in the plan as well the other thing that i'll typically do too is i'll make um like uh, relay panels so i'll take several relays kind of put them all together and you can even if you want to you could even incorporate these relays with something like this where you can add or subtract relays as you need them hope that makes sense uh, so sometimes what i'll do is i'll make like uh, a four relay panel you know it's got four relays and i'll mount that say in the back of a car and then it's got like one main power wire that goes into it one main ground wire that goes into it and then the rest are triggers and outputs pretty simple you're going to run a fuel pump you run your output to the fuel pump you run a trigger from whatever's going to trigger that whether it's a switch or an ecu and it's done and i'll make like a block of four put it back there even if i only use two of them if i ever need more power say for a nitrous bottle heater or whatever the main power is already run the relays are already back there mounted nice and secure and clean all i need to do is run a trigger wire to it and you know a power wire to the bottle heater itself from the relay and i'm ready to go now obviously in this setup i'm not going to need that but i have thoughts of maybe doing you know alky injection on this thing at some point or uh, i'm sure that there's going to be all kinds of things that i'll either add or, or subtract and so i may do the same thing as far as the relay the pre-built relay panels I think on this build, I can just do one relay panel though, maybe up front. May put a, may put one relay back. May I'll do like a two relay panel on the back, one for the fans, and then just one as a spare. Because with this one, the radiator is back here. And, uh, you know, there's no sense in running the relay up there when I can mount it back here. I don't know. That's, that's what I got to figure out. That's what I'm gonna figure out now. So usually what I'll start is uh, I'll start with pen and paper, kind of get an idea of what I need to run. So I'll list those things that I'm gonna need to run power to. See, I need fuel pump too. So that's already two relays in the back. So anyway, I'll start on paper, kind of jot down the things that I need to power, figure out where they are in the car and go from there. So along with these distribution blocks, the relays themselves, I like to keep this tape right here on hand. So this is a fabric tape, uh, industrial fabric tape. It's not, it's not like rubber, like a um, electrical tape. It's more of a fabric and it's made more to kind of loom your wires. You've kind of seen probably this stuff on like a factory setup. Uh, it's really nice. It doesn't really keep stuff from arcing like electrical tape would, but it, it's uh, more for routing nice cleanly, nice clean harnesses. Or you could use like this, this stuff here, which is like a stretch. Kind of reminds me of like, um, gosh, how come this thing won't focus? Kind of reminds me of like those Chinese finger handcuffs. So you can run the wire through there and protect it, keep it from rubbing. This is actually a really small, small uh, or thin piece. You can get this stuff in different sizes. And then of course, shrink tube, lots and lots of different sizes of heat shrink from big terminal size to the smallest little itty bitty sizes you can imagine. And then of course you got wire so i typically use 12 and 14 gauge for a lot of my wiring um, i actually hope to use everything that's on the ecu and the uh, fuse block but if i ever need any anything else i've got uh, extra wire so i think that's pretty much the basics when it comes to what i like to use to get started so let's grab the paper 
We'll start jotting down what it is I want to power in this thing. Oh, I forgot too. So I've got heat shrink that goes in the Dymo. Did a Friday video on that. You can check that out on the channel. And this allows you to kind of label the heat shrink itself. So if you want to label it differently than I did these, this is just tape on, on these ones that I've already done. So that's just tape. That's just to kind of get me started. But if I wanted to actually put heat shrink on these, with what it is printed on the heat shrink, you can do that with one of those labelers. All right, so let's see here. Uh, and I'm gonna write down everything too. So we, stuff that even doesn't need a relay or anything. So you got your lights, um, go headlights. Fuel pump. On this particular one, I got a water pump. Fans will go dash, dash, and dash lights. You see you. So you got your tail lights, brake lights. Those don't need a relay, but they do need to be wired. Brake lights, uh, tag lights. Got a wire for the. I guess this could go with fuel pump. The sending, sending unit. Now, like I said, a lot of this stuff's gonna be powered or triggered by the ECU, some of which doesn't need a relay, so I don't necessarily need to start the main harness with those things because there's already wire on the harness for the ECU to kind of, kind of do that. Really, I'm just kind of looking for the main things. Things that need relays. Things that need big power wires. I'm gonna do a charging port on this thing. Because the battery's kind of tucked away under the back or under the passenger seat. Not an easy way to get to it. If I want to charge it or jump it off, uh, I'm gonna do like a relocated or remote mount uh, charging port. Gonna use something like this. You really can't see what that is. Here's one that I'd wired up a long time ago. So basically all it is is a plug. You can kind of plug those two together. I'll mount this somewhere that's kind of hidden. If I need to charge it, I can plug charge into that thing or jump it off. All right, so I grabbed this thing to see if I get some hints. To kind of see what they've got on here. Kind of job those down as well. And I got wipers, radio, coil and like i said i don't even know if i'm half wipers on this thing but heck why not just put it on there now what i like to do is i like to go see and go through and see what i feel like is going to pull enough power where i'm going to need a relay and that's going to be uh your fuel pump water pump fans um uh, lights ECU is not going to need one. Brake lights won't need one. Tag lights won't need one. Not sure about the coil. Probably not. I think the coil is going to actually be powered by the ECU itself. But maybe. We'll see. So I think that's it. So right now, just based on what I'm looking at, it looks like I'm going to need four relays. I feel like I need... I feel like it needs more than that. I'll need a relay if I end up doing alcohol injection on this thing to run that pump, that alcohol pump. So maybe I'll do like a four panel relay up front, two panel relay in the rear, uh, two in the rear will get the fans in the fuel pump, and then I'll have two up front for like the lights and the water pump, and then I'll have two spares. So I've been a little bit under the weather, got a little bug floating around the house. Back on this thing though, I did make some progress on the relay panels. So let me show you those, we'll get those wired up right quick and uh, I'll kind of show you my process on those things. So I'm making two of these. So this one's gonna be for the front. It's a four relay setup. I don't know that I have use for four relays, but I'll figure I'd go ahead and make them anyway. And then I made one, it's just a two relay panel for the rear section. It's gonna be right behind the passenger seat here and got the fuel relay, the fan relay, 
and then I made some brackets and I just got them uh, cleat code in here for now. So I'm gonna pop this out, wire it up. I'll kind of show you how I like to do it. All right, so that's the gist of it. I've made videos like this before uh, on this, just making these panels. So it's pretty simple. Uh, really the one thing I probably would have changed on this particular panel is I would have made this a little bit further away so it's not so cramped in here. But very simply, if you understand how a relay works, I got power coming in. So these two are the power coming in. Uh, the two blue ones are the power going out. The black obviously is the ground and the green is the trigger wire. So the thing that's nice about this is that I don't have to like reroute my entire system if I decide to change a couple little things. It's all pinned out. I can just pin it in, pin it out, whatever I need to do. So I'll mount this in the car and then I can run the wires later. So I plan on doing the exact same thing on this one except for you notice that I've used all eight terminals on this. Um, and this one, because it has four relays, I won't be able to do that. So what I'll do is instead of like the, the master power and the uh, ground, you know, being on the terminal block, what I'll do is I'll just run master power in here and, and kind of tie off on all these and then I'll run a master ground in here as well. So the only thing it'll have is um, it'll have four terminals of power going out and then four terminals that are switched. So I can just figure out which one I want to operate. I'll plug those switches in there and then, you know, if this one is, you know, water pump switch wire, then I know the water pump out power is going to be here. I guess, I guess technically doing it this way is a lot more work, but it, in my opinion, it, it saves headache and, uh, saves work in the long run if I ever need to change anything. Plus it just looks super nice and clean. Uh, makes things really easy for you to kind of switch things up if you need to. So that's why I always do this. This particular one, you know, cutting everything and, and you know, heat shrinking and all that stuff, maybe 35, 40 minutes. So I mean, it's a little extra time, but in the end it makes, it makes your project look a lot cleaner. And worst case too, if you ever, you know, change projects, decide to do something else, you could literally steal this module from your last project, slide it in your new one, you know, relabel it if that's what you want to do and it's good to go. So there it is. I'll probably make one more little tab off the top here. And I've just got Clecos in here for now, but I'll most likely, once I'm pretty satisfied with everything, I'll uh, just put some pop rivets in there and it'll, it'll be good to go. All right, well, I think that went pretty well. Got both of them finished. Got the front one and the rear one mounted. So basically they're just ready for wiring. So I think I showed you the rear one already. Got that one dialed. And then the front one is going to go right here, right next to the ECU. And like I said, because there's four of them up here, you basically just got power out on four of the terminals and then you've got the triggers on four of the terminals. And then I'll just manually wire in the power in the grounds. You're going to have to kind of wait and see what, uh, what those are going to run. A lot of that stuff is going to come through this fuse block, so I'll just use you know, these wires to power those relays, the ones that kind of coordinate with whatever I'm using. Uh, that way, you know, if I pop a fuse, I know exactly what it was that did it. So anyway, there you go. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more next week. Go do work, son.